Quiet, please. Quiet, please. QuietPlease.org presents Quiet Please, which is written and directed by Willis Cooper and which features Paul Narum. Quiet Please for today is called The Venetian Blind Man. Now, I very seldom make mistakes. In fact, I never made a mistake in my life until a few weeks ago when I made rather an idiot of myself before a large radio audience by dying. It embarrassed me to no end, as Mr. Ivor Lamb of London, England sometimes says, when I came to life again. Came to life to realize that I was not the victim of an air aneurysm as I had thought, and that I had not fallen victim to what Miss Sissy Williams of New York sometimes calls a tummy ache. By the way, it is Miss Williams' birthday today. You see, I had established something of a reputation as the man who knows everything, and an episode of this sort does not do my reputation any good. So, alas. Alas, not to mention a lack of day. By the way, just to refresh your memory, allow me to reintroduce myself. The name is Charles W. Afternoon, formerly of Tarzana, California. My business? Why, I'm the man who knows everything. Isn't that enough? (laughs) What do I know? Why, for example, it rained on Easter in Chicago in 1929. Lieutenant Colonel Dewey Seat of Salinas, California, was once a trumpeter in the cavalry. Mrs. John M. Gore, wife of the well-known realtor of Pekin, Illinois, has a broken arm. Her maiden name, by the way, was Ruth Epkins. A pair of oversized rubbers in a closet in Mr. Willis Cooper's office were left there by the Reverend Julian Mattern of Perth Amboy, New Jersey. There is a small hole in your left sock. Mr. John P. Marquand, the eminent novelist, is under the impression that the Dunsburg automobile is a foreign car. Well, in fact, it was always manufactured in Indianapolis, Indiana. And Miss Cecile Tragesant, my beautiful secretary, is listening at the keyhole of my office door. I just wanted to know... What I was going to say about you, Miss Tragesanth, you have already heard. Yes, you may go out and get a cup of coffee and a piece of pineapple upside-down cake. Just a moment, Miss Tragesanth. You lost your purse in car 6114 of the 4th Avenue local subway train coming to work this morning. Here is a dollar which you will forget to return to me. Oh, I'll give it back, Mr. Afternoon. Unfortunately, that is not true. You will forget it until Flag Day, which is June 14th. At that time, you will be in Vancouver, British Columbia, discussing employment with Major Dirk Dyspector of Station KJOR. After that, you will forget it permanently. I'm sorry, Mr. Afternoon. Now, if you will admit the gentleman who is waiting to see me. There isn't... Oh, yes, there is, Miss Tragesanth. His name is Mikhail Palmasoni, though for reasons of his own, which I shall not go into, he prefers to call himself Mike Pampson. Yes, sir. Come in, Mr. Pampson. Grazie, signorina. Signor Afternoon, io voglio... I know what you want, Signor Palmasoni. Pampson. Help Mr. Pampson to a chair, Miss Tragesant. Thank you, horrible. De nada, senor. That's Spanish, Miss Tragesanth. Oh? Mr. Pampson is Italian. Really? Sheva piano vassano, Mr. Pampson. Oui, vassano, valentano, signorina. Non è vero? Miss Tragesanth doesn't know what that means, Mr. Pampson. It was the motto of her high school class, but she hasn't the faintest idea what it means. Did I swear? You may be excused, Miss Tragesanth. You take an aspirin for your headache. I forgot my headache. I didn't. 
Thank you, Mr. Afternoon. Mr. Afternoon, are we alone? Except for the radio audience, Mr. Pampson. I had forgotten them. You must never forget them, Mr. Pampson. I have a matter of great importance to consult you about. I know what it is, Mr. Pampson. Oh, no, 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 please. I know who you are, Mr. Pampson. Would you ask the gentleman at the organ to play a little louder, Mr. Afternoon, so that we will not be over our... If you wish. Mr. Berman, will you play a trifle louder, please? Never mind, Bert. By this time, we all know that Mr. Pampson is in danger of his life. Or rather, that he thinks he is. I am. Um, Take it easy, Mr. Pampson. Orville is still in bed. I hope he falls out and breaks his neck. You hate Orville. I have reason to hate Orville. So you say. So I mean. Mm-hmm. Did he give you that knife scar in your intercostal region? Where? Ribs. Knife scar. How you know I got a knife scar on my ribs, Mr. Afternoon? Why, I know everything, Mr. Pampson. Cospetto, yes, he gave me that. I even know who you are, Mr. Pampson. Whisper it. No. You are Venetian, Mr. Pampson. I am from Venice. You do not see very well. I am blind, Mr. Afternoon. Then you are the Venetian blind man. Too late, Mr. Berman. Everybody are that. And I'm afraid I can't help you, Mr. Pampson. You must help me, Mr. Afternoon. It can't be done. Good day, sir. You're not going to send me out to be murdered? I am not sending you anywhere, Mr. Pampson. But I will be murdered. Orville will murder me. It is useless to try to entrap me into a statement, Mr. Pampson. I will pay you large sums of money. I already have large sums of money. You know everything, Mr. Afternoon. Yes, I know everything. You know whether I'm going to be murdered or not. Yes, I do. Am I? I won't tell you. You don't know. Oh, yes, I do. No, you don't. Mr. Pampson, I will give you an example of what I know. All right, go on. Your great-grandfather was Dante Alighieri Ravenscroft. Yes, how do you know? You will admit I am right, Mr. Pampson. Yes, but what difference does it... It makes a great deal of difference. Please go away. What if I don't choose to go away, Mr. Afternoon? I will take steps. You will call the police? No. What will you do then? I have my own way of ending this scene. What way? Don't you ever listen to the radio? Uh, certainly, but... Well then? No, no, don't do that to me. Will you go? No. Very well then, I have no alternative. End the scene, Mr. Berman. <laughs> My, that was clever, Mr. Afternoon. I thought so. He was a scalawag, Mr. Afternoon. Yes. I just knew he was. I'll do the knowing around here, Miss Trecosanth. Yes, Mr. Afternoon. Do you know something, Miss Trecosanth? No, Mr. Afternoon. I think you're a very charming young woman, Miss Trecosanth. How nice, Mr. Afternoon. What would you do, Miss Trecosanth, if I kissed you? What am I saying? I know what you'll do. Lean over, Miss Trugasense. Thank you. You're welcome, Mr. Afternoon. I know what you're going to do. 
what? Ask me to kiss you again. Please do, Mr. Afternoon. Very, very nice. Now I know what you're going to do, Mr. Afternoon. Eh? You're going to ask me to kiss you again. Why, so I am. If you please, Miss T. With pleasure, Mr. A. Mm. Oh, darn it. Why, what's the matter, Mr. Afternoon? The telephone's going to ring. Who is it? The Venetian blind man. Again? Hello, Charles W. Afternoon speaking. Yes, Mr. Volcano. I thought his name was Pamson. I know, Mr. Volcano. I know, Mr. Volcano. You don't have to tell me that, Mr. Volcano. I know it. Yes, goodbye. Mr. Afternoon, I thought his name was Pamson. Volcano. The phone's going to ring again. Is it? Hello, bud. How are... No, no. I'm glad you're feeling fine. Yes, of course I read your article on the Atlantic Monthly. I enjoyed it very much, but... Why, Mr. John B. Stetson University is in Dillon, Florida, and there are those who love it. You're welcome, bud. That was bud. Bud Volcano? Bud Berry. Tell me something, Mr. Afternoon. All right. The county clerk of Polk County, Minnesota in 1925 was Minnie Ibo. A2 of the 52nd Troop Carrier Wing in the last war was Lieutenant Colonel Bryce P. Disk, Jr., whose father is a retired Brigadier General. Mr. Ralph Morgan of Bay City is coming to New York on June 1st. If you have six cups and six saucers in six different colors, they can be arranged in 720 different combinations. If you had ten of each, you could arrange them in 3,627,800 combinations. They load fresh-caught mountain trout on the Santa Fe Chief at La Junta, Colorado. No. They do, too. That isn't what I wanted you to tell me. I know. Well, tell me, then. Do you love me? There's somebody at the door, Miss Drugsant. Oh, poo. Oh, poo again. Who's that? The Venetian blind man. Oh. Let him in, please, Miss Trevisant. I don't understand how he can be. How do you do? I, I mean, good day, Mr. Volcano. Bueno, Sarah. Why, he's not blind, Mr. Afternoon. I have eyes to see you, beautiful young lady. Will you sit down, Mr. Volcano? Thank you. Well... Mr. Volcano. You know everything, Mr. Afternoon. Yes, sir. Do you know who I am? Yes. I am the Venetian blind man. He isn't blind, Mr. Afternoon. He's looking right at me. I know, Miss Trevisant. What I want to know, Mr. Afternoon, is... Whether Orville is going to murder you. Why, that's what the other Venetian blind man wanted to know, isn't it? How did you... Oh, you were listening at the keyhole. Yes, sir. What other Venetian blind man? He was really blind. A Mr. Mike Pampson, who claimed that he was the Venetian blind man. I never heard of him. Nevertheless. Be still, Miss Trevisant. Yes, sir. I want to know if Orville is going to murder me. I won't tell you. I want to know. I won't tell you. Who's Orville? You tell her, Mr. Volcano. Orville's the boss. Boss of what? Boss of the criminal underworld, Miss Trevisant. He murders people? Yes. Oh. Is he going to murder me? I refuse to answer that question. Oh, come on. Mr. Afternoon said no. Mr. Volcano, you will tell Miss Trevisant the name of your great-grandfather. His name is Cesare Borgio Nuno. Make a note of that, Miss Trevisant. All right. C-E-S-A-R-E. How do you spell Cesare? 
Oh. Why do you ask that, Mr. Afternoon? Because I know the name of the great-grandfather of the nation blind man. Where? I will know it when I hear it. My great-grandfather's name was Jazari. Miss Tregesanth, the Venetian blind man is believed by the police to be a sinister henchman, the killer, for Orville, who is sometimes known as the decorator. Yes, sir. That's a me. Mr. Pamson said it is he. He ain't. Isn't. Mr. Afternoon, why would Orville murder this gentleman, or the other gentleman for that matter? You tell her, Mr. Volcano. Don't you know? Certainly I know. Well, because he knows one of us is a phony. You mean one of you isn't the Venetian blind man? That's right, lady. Listen, I'm a him. I know all about the Venetian blinds. Look, they're a bunch of flat sticks. They got strips to hold them together. They go up and down when you pull at a string, like this. That's right. So I'm him. Mr. Pampson said he was. He ain't. Isn't. Mr. Pampson is from Venice. And he's blind. He says he is. He fell over the rug. You fell over the rug this morning? No, that's right. You're going to fall over it in about five minutes. Oh, no, Mr. Afternoon. You wait and see. Listen, Mr. Afternoon, this is uh, Pampson, or I'm here. Of course. How does he know that? He's got a radio, hasn't he? Mr. Afternoon means that he's listening to us on the radio. Yes, huh? Well, I'll fix that. Mustn't touch those plugs, Mr. Volcano. I'll blow his head off. Really, Mr. Volcano? I'll fill him full of holes. Maybe he'd fill you full of holes. Mr. Volcano, is it? Volcano. Like Mount Vesuvius? Worse. I'll burn him down. Be careful, Mr. Volcano. He can hear you. All right. If you're listening, you, uh, what's his name? Pamson. Which? Pamson. P-A-M. All right, Pamson. If you're listening, listen to this. You show up. I'll feel you so full of bullets. Eight a man and a boy won't be able to pick you up. You hear me? I'll cut your neck from here to here. I'll murder you, Pamson. You hear me? Be careful, Mr. Volcano. Yes, do. Listen, Pamson. I dare you to come face me. I dare you, Pamson. You hear me? Roger. Who said that? I said, who said that? I think it was Mr. Pamson. Well. Do you know what's going to happen, Mr. Afternoon? Certainly I know. What? Oh, boy. Is he coming here, Mr. Afternoon? He certainly is. Well, I... How's he going to get here? My goodness, don't you hear the music? Yes, but... Yes, but... Listen. Look. Who are you? Who are you? I'm the Venetian blind man. I'm the Venetian blind man. You are not. You are not? I am. I am. Gentlemen, gentlemen. Listen, Pamson. Sir? I'm mean. So am I, Volcano. I kill people. I bet I've killed more people than you have. How many? Uh, twelve. (laughs) Yeah, I kill a fourteen. Well, you never killed your cousin. I did so. Well, my second cousin. I'm going to kill you. Well, I'm going to kill you. You are not. I am so. Gentlemen. Uh, Yes, sir. Gentlemen, what will Orville think? Gee. Gosh. Gentlemen, I know the name of the great-grandfather of the Venetian blind man. Dante Alighieri Reynstrom? No. No? No? No. No. Mr. Afternoon says no. Well, gee. Yeah, gosh. You know what this means, gentlemen? Who is the Venetian blind man then, Mr. Afternoon? I know. Volcano? Thompson? Gentlemen, I will let you figure it out between yourselves. But... Come, Miss Tregesanth. Let us retire whilst the gentlemen fight it out. Yes, Mr. Afternoon. Fight it out? 
fight. Come, Miss Chokasa. Yes, sir. I can lick you. I can lick you. And gentlemen, don't forget to think a moment about what Orville will say. And what Orville will do. After you, Miss Tragosanth. Thank you, Mr. Afternoon. I hope they'll be comfortable. Do you want me to take dictation now, Mr. Afternoon? No, Miss Tragosanth. I want you to kiss me. Why, I know you will, Mr. Afternoon. <laughs> Well, what do you know? Why, darling, I know when it's 12 o'clock in New York, it's 8 p.m. in Oslo. And I know that aspirin is acetylsalicyclic acid ester. And I know the television is here to stay. And that Norman Foster, the movie director, is married to Sally Blaine. And Loretta Young is her sister. And I know that there's a hotel in Montgomery, Alabama called Jefferson Davis. And I know that Alan Craig, the advertising man, was once a song and dance man. And I know that Burgess Meredith's first name is Oliver and that you can get genuine Schweppes ginger beer in this country again. And I know that Lieutenant Commander M.C. Kelly's name is Michael Collins, and Pete Martin's office is in room 300 at the RCA building in New York, and... Do you know what those two Venetian blind men are going to do in the other room? Certainly I know. They're awfully quiet. They're talking. They'll figure it out. What will Orville do to them, Mr. Afternoon? Orville won't do anything. Won't he? Oh, no. They'll do it themselves. Do what? Listen. Music. It's Bert Berman again. He's playing sad music. Wait. Yes, gentlemen? Mr. Afternoon. Yes? We discovered something. Yes? We're not either one of us, the Venetian blind man. Of course not. I knew that. I didn't know he wasn't either. And I didn't know he wasn't. Gee, Orville. He'll be awful mad. Oh, yes. Well. Well. Goodbye, gentlemen. Goodbye, Mr. Afternoon. Goodbye, miss. Goodbye, Mr. Balkar. And Pamson. Goodbye. Oh, gentlemen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Put some papers down on the floor. Yes, yes sir. sir. Papers? Blood is so hard to get out of the rugs. Oh, is Orville going to murder them? Oh, no. They did, too. Oh, no, for heaven's sake, they committed suicide, didn't they? Of course. Well, for goodness sake, there isn't any Venetian blind man at all, is there? Somebody at the door, Miss Trogstomps. I'll get it. Of course. They didn't get any on the rug after all, Mr. Afternoon. It always pays to be tidy. Hello, Mr. Afternoon. Hello, Orville. Well, for heaven's sake, Orville who? Why, Orville Venetian, Miss Tregesanth. Why, yes, Miss Tregesanth. Uh, my great-grandfather was Thomas Alva Venetian, the inventor of the Venetian blind. Why, what's the matter, Miss Tregesanth? Orville, Miss Tregesanth is in love. Go away, Orville. Well, but... What was that? The Venetian blinds fell down, darling. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Afternoon. I'll fix them. After all, <laughs> I am the Venetian blind man, ain't I? Excuse me, Mr. Afternoon. <laughs> oh, no, you're not, Orville. Will you kiss me, please, Mr. Afternoon? <laughs> The 
title of tonight's Quiet Please story is The Venetian Blind Man. It was written and directed by Willis Cooper. And Mr. Afternoon, the man who talked to you, was Paul Narum. And Lindsay Townsend was Mr. Tragasanth. Tampson was played by Jeff Lucvisi. And Volcano was John Allen Gantz. Orville was Paul Moss. The music for Quiet Please is obviously by Albert Berman. Now for a word about next week, here is our writer-director, Willis Cooper. Before I tell you about next week's story, may I remind you that next Sunday only, Quiet Please will be heard at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, two hours earlier than usual. I hope you'll listen to the story I have for you about the big strike. And so until next week at this same time, I am quietly yours, Ernest Chappell.